What follows is an infusion of ideology and poetry, village and forest, grief and praise. To acknowledge elders is to praise those whose grief has grown us up. The single greatest threat to life is the romanticization of progress. Goats sleep out in snow and sleet conditions, birth mostly unassisted and browse widely for their own food. This wild health is not domestication. Flush toilets and hot showers are completely unnecessary. Field grass is sweet in spring and sour in autumn, sodden in winter and highly flammable in summer. Blackwood wattles flower in late winter alongside daffodils and silver wattles. Where goats have stomped down and eaten away the blackberries, an abundance of plants re-emerge. Wallaby grass, sticky weed, bidgy widgy, pennycress, native geranium, forget-me-not, kangaroo grass, scotch thistle, fireweed, bent grass, wattle mat rush, dock, dianella, Sow thistle and lamandra have all emerged. Patriarchy, like blackberry, becomes a nuisance in the absence of diversity. The first memory loss of my fifties concerned Freddie Mercury's name. Flagellating with stinging nettle is a crude and effective form of acupuncture and like blackwood wattle bark treats rheumatic and arthritic pain. Blackwood is old-timer medicine. As goats don't have beaks, the establishment of the herd's hierarchy gets down not to a pecking but a horning order. Poems are grief doulas. They're akin to stepping out of cold lake water in midwinter. In the culture I was born, a theodolite is rarely observed as a continuum of systemic violence. Goats are my dreaming. All medicine is non monetized. Monetized medicine is something else. Civility is the noise of cities enforcing culture. Some of my old people spring from Ireland. Isolt is an ancestral princess. We are always living in mythic and metaphorical story. You're a dog man, and I'm a man dog, I say to Zero. The magic of words spoken from a place of love. Nothing needs speaking but praise when a dog brings you a rabbit on your birthday. I was born in a high-rise hospital on Camaragal country. It's taken nearly 50 years to feel any substantial grounding. Socrates had nothing to learn from trees, and so set forth the culture I was born into. I am often reminded of my friend Peter O'Mara by his poem, Things I'd Like to Tell My Son. A handful of my old people hail from France. My old microbes still raise the ancestral breads of Europe with grains grown in unseeded soil. Surveying disrupts the sacred, ungridded acres of natural law 
but only momentarily in relative time. When men can cry together unashamedly, then we really have something going on. Like my dad, I'm a two-son father. Born on the same day, Blackwood and I are late winter fruiting varieties. Zephyr is the warm ripening air through the harvest bounty. Animism is perhaps a million years old, though mostly pre-Socratic in my culture. We've lost so much. Our culture is awash in grief for its unregistered losses and lost story. White-browed scrub wrens feed busily after the axe is rested and the wheelbarrow rolls away from bludgeoned wood. Technology is a linear memory form, almost exclusively human, and prone to overwhelming bouts of amnesia and grandiosity. A plaything of civility, growth economics is a trammeling noise that makes people and land sick. My childhood and youth were lived in Gundangara people's country. The Mitigong Creek was my first belonging place. Yabbies and honeysuckle nectar is my earliest dreaming. Most books are either too old or too new and rarely entirely present. From age five to 18, I never once heard the word Gundangara leave the lips of a single teacher. This absence of truth-telling speaks into the pervasive stealth of uninitiated peoples who have lost their beginning stories and connection to ancestral lands. Poems are highway signs. We must get out of the car and walk a number of days to receive them as the wallaby tracks they really are. Good story is an immeasurable medicine. I was a beaver in a previous life. Hence the state of my teeth and the leaky weirs by the creek. Judgment is always a mirroring. That I don't like cities makes me one. I care even less what I smell like under lockdown. Some of my old people are Germanic. I will enter lock-up with less teeth. It's courting trouble to name a child after a wind god. The Teutonic Knights of St. Mary of Jerusalem are the foundational fathers of modern schooling systems. Coercive or forced learning derives from Germanic warlords. There are two Jara springs and two Jara summers, making up at least six seasons in a given year. Ideology is only harmful when we believe we're not being ideological. Ideology and ego are complicit lovers. All day long they make love together in a room full of mirrors. Narcissism is the permanent pandemic of our culture. Asparagus is a late winter fruit. When snow is lightly falling, they poke up through the poultry straw. Goats grow thick coats for the winter months. I grow a beard in solidarity, but don't pretend to have their resilience. I admire asparagus for its speciesism. Permaculture is not a solution. It is a practice that can enable wisdom, meaning and connection. It is a practice of re-emergence with the living of the world. A practice that enables people to become participants and students of the living of the world's worlds. Cold water plunges are really grief poems. My art schooling crossed Wiradjuri in Gadigal countries. I was oblivious at the time and went on to make art shaped by this intransigence. 
in post-human defense of weeds and ferals is another of my dreaming stories. Without tears, we are zombies. I call my teeth the John Howard years. Dogs are my Chinese dreaming story. Many of my old people were peasants from ancient and sacred lands, more recently labelled England. Ringtail possums sleep in the drays they build in ancestral hawthorn trees. In exchange for their protective habits, the hawthorns receive possum nutrients. Being lived in is a gift. We are comprised of more non-human cells than human, and more water than dry terra. Our non-human brains or gut microbiomes order our world and determine our thoughts. Given the expansion of Western food, it is not surprising the world has descended into madness. Depression equals grief minus a cold grandmother lake to jump into. I have once disturbed a brush-tailed possum sleeping in a ring-tailed possum's dray in a hawthorn tree. We were both shocked. A memory from circa 1978. It's not cool to encourage city kids to piss on the electric fence, but geez, it was funny at the time. I was initiated in Jajurong's spoken for country. We were asked to speak as truth-telling souls, not as good men. My woman is a magpie in full song. Despite rough night, she sings with magical cheer throughout each day. My underworlding is blue wren terror. A flock of blue wrens brought me back from death. Every time I come across a blue or jenny wren, a wave of gratitude washes over me. Myth is often underestimated in the body. Like all intelligent animals, an after-lunch meditation or siesta is part of goat culture. Stillness is possible, and it's never a mind game. Rabbits, goats, dogs and bees are also my people. I have lived most of my adult life in southern Jara people's country. Some of my old kin were born and buried in Scotland. They were mostly folk unregistered by history but are now registered here in this moment of utterance. I have never been physically caged, but I know what incarceration feels like. Sing, little bird, your song. I too am looking for food. Martin Shaw writes, They say animals sense the mood of humans. I know this to be true for at least dogs, goats, ducks, bees, robins, honey eaters and wrens. Goats can be both loved and eaten. Love and death nourish one another. Carrots can be both loved and eaten. Love and death nourish one another. In my first week of university, I was gang-bashed by five agricultural students and left in a ditch. I consider this moment as foundational to my education. The foregrounding of Promethean foresight, the backgrounding of Epimethean hindsight, and the permanent undergrounding of Pandorian insight has, I believe, led to systemic domination. An intelligent and sensing culture is wild in health. If you don't come out of the forest blood-kissed, you haven't been in the forest. Saliva is a powerful salve. I have been transfixed by the emanating love of a quince tree. While this gentle moment occurred in a garden with a cultivar, it had nothing to do with domestication. 
In great numbers, red brow finches flow through the anti-avery to feast on wild fennel seed. Blood that is hooked by or returned to a plant is a blessing. I've always liked to charge through the brambles as much as make haste to the couch. Unfenced dogs are a healthy mix of feralty and domestication. I have witnessed one wattle bird and two crows flying in cahoots. Armies of plastic hand sanitizer bottles line up across the capital scene. COVID-19 is a pioneer species par excellence. As my goat herd friend Brad says, keep your expectations low and your standards high. In this hemisphere, I am a winter baby. Barbed wire says a lot about the culture I was born into. Everything is an inner world, including world news. The last drops of Anthropocene wealth is spent on species cleansing, printing money via the rubbery economy of inflation only escalates mass extinctions. The turning of the money tables is a good place to start, but to compost the empire requires more than a gallant act. It requires permanent gardening and, to call on Tyson Young Kapoorta, a custodial species approach. I am forever grateful for permaculture although this is not my only mindset. Duality begins with identity. Inclusivity is not always related to an ethic of diversity. It often leads to coercion. Wiradjuri woman Jen Ridley helped me with this one. There is no view from the ship that gives to country. Growing and tending fodder crops is just one response to mass consumption. I make an excellent student when I'm ready to learn. I too will eat the new black magic of the old timer forest. Blackberries are my sweet cutting ancestors. Fire weeds enter the morning's brilliance with seed heads drying, alighting and waiting for the summer's warming spirit to return. I have everything to learn from trees. Hindsight and insight are masculine and feminine countries that shapeshift across each other's ridgelines, causing little tremors and goosebumps. Gender fluidity is as ancient as animism. Gender neutering is just another pollutant of modernity. I never thought I'd hear the world as quiet as the autumn of 2020. Neo-peasantry is a privileged response to insanity. It is not a solution. Blue wrens are superb fairies who dwell in brambling underworlds. Intellectuals are cities, complex and unconscious, who rarely live outside of their walled interiors. Yellow robins inhabit dense holly fly zones and join the digging parties by the creek. Many read my mood of creekside care and join me by my shovel. Herbalists, midwives, dispute resolvers and doulas of every kind are my matriarchs. The witch hunt smashed apart our culture. Still traumatized by this history, we wallow in fundamental patriarchy, thinking this state of conquest is normative. I'm an extremely large microbe, unavoidably engaged in dynamic processes of circularity, timeless and increasingly toothless. Medicine is walking, sleeping, saunering, cold water plunging, Gardening, fasting, meaning-making, singing, dancing, gathering, 
and high fiber and fermented food eating. Imagine if this was our prescribed health system. Like the Teutonic Knights, Socrates and Adam Smith, the poet Hesiod is another nail in the coffin of land honoring culture. Roman law is still trammeling the world, but eventually indigenous philosophy will return us all home. My Druid ancestors held university in great oak forests. The professors were the trees. Roman law smashed apart these halls of knowing and belonging like it did in Australia. We are all still subject to Roman imperialism. Its Greek heart still beats Socratic, Platonic. Coercion is never sustainable. The will to be as free as siestering goats is strong and inextinguishable. As a child of the 70s, I, like most of my contemporaries, am effectively unvaccinated. While conspiracies are mostly insane propositions, they accurately represent the mistrust many people have of governments and business. Blue wrens are superb fairies who dwell in blackberry underworlds. My belonging in this country can only ever be feral. My empathy for ferals and weeds deepens each year. This deepening is not a counselling out of indigenous biota, rather an opening to what more than humans teach us. I often find I've stopped breathing. I think it's a cultural thing. Our relationships with our first family directly affects our relationships in our second family, which in turn directly affects what sort of mentors and elders we become. Everything scientific modernity has created, while sometimes useful, is always unnecessary. In this culture, our minds often become whinge bags. If this occurs, a discipline of breath is required to blow the bag open and change the operating patterns. That is when initiation rites are not available. I owe so much gratitude to breath and cold water, to the many gaseous and liquidy gods of the living of the world. To build their nests under blackberry cover, New Holland honey eaters freely gather goat fleece held on blackberry thorns. Apart from the English that names this non-monetized economy and interbelonging, the story itself is post-colonial. I'm interested in, in what words don't exist in English, and this has led me to wordsmithing. Among this promiscuity, social warming, feralty, locosphere, permapoesis, interbelonging, and hyper-techno-civility. I have so much gratitude to soil, sun, and rainfall the many gods of the living of the world that enable the magic of language and culture to spring forth from and back into life itself. I owe so much gratitude to nourishment herself, her swollen belly, the wellspring of successive culture making and her part in the maternal transmission of daily love. I owe so much to parenthood, without which grief would not have grown me up a little past my narcissism. My worst self is a city. My best self is a forest. I am well loved. Oh, oh, oh.
Oh, my God.